Hey, what's going on? I'm Keith here at Sports Vibes TV, your destination for Knicks news, rumors, and analysis. I'm coming at you with another video. This one, we're talking about a report dropped by New York Post's Mark Berman discussing Tibbs and his feelings towards the Cam trade. Now, I've been talking about that for uh, some time here on the channel, and now it's actually being reported from the media. So we're going to jump into that story, talk about it, and see exactly what's going on. But before I get into it, if you like this video, do me a solid, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and also make sure you have notifications set to all, that way you're notified whenever I drop a new video. So with that being said, let's jump right into it and see exactly what Mark Berman has to say. So the title of this article is Tom Thibodeau didn't want Knicks to trade for Cam Reddish. Now I've looked at some of the things that Tom Thibodeau has said and me personally, you know, I'm not a source, I'm not connected or anything. I'm just a Knicks fan like you, but I've heard Tom Thibodeau say things. For example, he was talking about him when he actually got traded here and Tom Thibodeau said, Hey, the scouts like him. Now, the last time Tom Thibodeau said something like that, it was about Luca Vildoza. And as we can see, when Luca Vildoza was here, it really didn't seem like Tom Thibodeau really embraced him as a part of the team. Also, you look at some of the things that have transpired since the trade. Tom Thibodeau mentioned that he called Cam, talked to Cam and said that, you know, he wanted to discuss some of the things he saw while Cam was out there on the court when they were going up against the New York Knicks or going or when we were going up against the Atlanta Hawks. To me, that's a red flag right there. That really doesn't seem like it's an encouraging phone call because right after that phone call, Cam has pretty much been DMP every game that's been close. So those are two things that really jumped out to me. And now you're seeing a reporter like Mark Berman uh, drop his story and discuss it as well. So this is how I start the article. It says there wasn't any garbage time Saturday night at the newly named crypto.com arena when the Knicks battled the Lakers in a roller coaster contest. That means Cam Reddish sat. Reddish sat through regulation and he sat through overtime in what eventually became a 122 115 Hollywood heartbreaker to the Lakers. And heartbreaker is the best way to explain it. You know, it was a game where the Knicks came out on fire. We dropped, what, 71 points in the first half. And somehow we allowed the Lakers to, you know, get back into that game, take the lead. Luckily enough, you know, for us, Archie Barrett knocked down the buzzer beater. Well, not really a buzzer beater. I think there was about eight seconds left on the clock. But he knocked down late second shot to at least force overtime. But still, I think we only scored four points in OT and, and couldn't pull out the win. Now, just to skip a little bit further down says he has been activated for seven games, but has not played in four of them entering Monday's game in Utah. He has made no impact because Knicks coach Tom Thibodeau won't find a spot in his tight rotation for the former Duke star. Word around the league is when Knicks president Leon Rose moved to strike a deal with Atlanta on January 15th, the head coach wasn't all in on the move. And like I said at the start of this video, you know, a lot of the things I've heard from Tom Thibodeau, you know, kind of echo this sentiment that he's not necessarily all the way on board with this move. And we have a lot of wings already in his mind that can help us win. So to bring in Cam, it kind of adds more crunch to his rotation, which has already, you know, garnered scrutiny throughout the fan base. So let's see, let's continue. From my understanding, Tibbs didn't want him and they did it anyway, said an NBA source who has been in contact with Nick's brass. Now, if you go a little bit further on in this uh, article, there are some things that I, I liked uh, that there was discussing Cam and, and what Cam wants to be in this league. So it says here, ironically, Reddish, the number 10 pick of the 2019 draft, asked for a trade before the season began from the uh, began from the Hawks because he wanted more minutes. He was averaging 23.4 minutes per game with Atlanta. However, another NBA personal man who spoke a personnel man who spoke with the Hawks about Reddish said the issue felt larger. It goes beyond wanting more minutes, he said. Cam thinks he should be the number one option on any team. It's good to be confident, but there was feelings he wanted things handed to him. Hawks GM Travis Lank made a point to say he traded Reddish with an eye on the best deal and not the best situation for Reddish. Now, the last part I don't really like, but there were feelings he wanted things handed to him. I'm not 100% on board with that one. But I do like the fact that Cam is confident in his ability and he thinks that he could be in a number one option on any team. And especially with the way RJ is blossoming, if we can have Cam Reddish and RJ Barrett 
you know, grow into a dynamic duo on this team. I think we can be explosive both offensively and defensively. We saw RJ, you know, step up and go up against LeBron James in the game against the Lakers, you know, and he, he was he worked hard. It was definitely a difficult matchup for him, but he for but he gave a, a lot of effort out there. So to have RJ starting to grow and blossom and then to now add a Cam Reddish who has a lot of potential, who can step up and has the tools to be an elite defender. You know, he just has to, you know, be driven. And, and if he's given an opportunity, I believe he can step up and actually fill that role as a nice dynamic duo with RJ Barrett. It's all going to come down to Tibbs actually giving him some minutes. And I know some people... Uh, what I'll do, I'll put the link to the article uh, down in the description if you want to read it to its entirety. But another thing, this is not just Mark Berman that's reporting this. There were also uh, reports that this was coming from other league sources. For example, Chad Ford, he has his podcast called NBA Big Boards. He had the Bleacher Reports Jake Fisher on and he echoed the same sentiment. He said Tom Thibodeau was not gung-ho about this trade um, and you should look for the Knicks to try to make a minor move in order to free up some minutes for Cam. He also broke down some of the players that are, you know, highest on the, uh, the totem pole in terms of us trying to ship him out of here and get someone else. I think number one was Nerlens Noel. I think two was Kimball Walker. And then Alec Burks came in third. Jake Fisher did say that, you know, the Knicks do view Alec Burks highly and they don't want to just give him away for nothing. They'll probably try to package him and get rid of one of these contracts that may end up hurting the Knicks in the long run, like uh, a Nerlens Noel. And I really don't understand why the team continues to try and put Alec Burks out there uh, over a Cam Reddish when Burks hasn't even been playing well. So it's not like Burks is out there upping his trade value. If you look what he did in January, he averaged 9.5 points per game, 3.3 assists per game, and he's only shooting 32.8% from three from the three-point line and he's still getting 22 minutes per game on average so you know and to start february he hasn't up those numbers at all either so you know i'm not sure why the team is continually uh, trying to to give more and more minutes to alec burks he played 30 minutes in the overtime loss against the lakers and he had a bad inbound pass that turned out to be a turnover which really hurt us in that uh, in those crucial moments of the game so i think we even now still have the ability or the the minutes in the rotation to get cam involved but for some reason they're continually uh trotting out players and lineups that really don't i think put the knicks in the best position to succeed so let me know what you think down in the comments do you think the knicks front office and tom thibodeau are on the same page me personally it does not seem like they are and that is one of the key signs of this function within an organization they've made this trade for cam reddish and tom thibodeau has no plan in place right now to get him on the court and i think that is a major mistake and this is the knicks mishandling this cam reddish situation but those are my thoughts i want to know yours let me know down in the comments once again i'm keese host of sports vibes tv and i'm out